Welcome to Trivial Debates. Welcome to Trivial Debates. It is August 21st, 2022. We've got a brand new panel of excellent, intelligent, argumentative gentlemen that are here to discuss their subjects. And I've got the questions and hopefully they've got the answers because uh, we're going to have a little debate time. We're going to present these topics and each gentleman is going to present their subject matter in such a way that I have to give them a point based off the argument, not based off of what I like. So that being said, I'm going to introduce our panel. But first, we've got Jody Simpson. Hello. How are you today, Jody? Eh, tired. Good to but hear. That's Good o- to hear. But that's Plenty okay. of energy. It only give them a better advantage, really. And uh, next up, we got Davin, the unbeaten Skellhorn, who's apparently been replaced by Urkel. <laughs> I believe, he, I believe he didn't even make the speed round last episode. If, if Get out of here, Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> Looking sharp, Davin. Luckily, that upgrade an image. Yeah, yeah I know. Can, can my, Davin my, be on a podcast without using a figurine? <laughs> I don't think so, no. I'm Unlikely, a comic, man. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, we got Christopher Seymour. Yeah. Hopefully you get some good answers for us, Chris. From what I've uh, what I've got in the books, from what everyone submitted, it's going to be a good damn time today. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm going off script. I'm completely off. Like I, I don't know what to say here. Yeah. I don't even know <laughs> um, all right. So I guess we'll just get this started. You guys know what to do. You follow us on Trivial Debates, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, wherever social media is. You know where to find us. So we're going to get this show started on the road. I am fucking rambling. I'm so sorry, guys. All right. Let's start it up. All right. Let's start ding, it ding, up. ding. Ding, ding, ding. Okay. Oh, wait, why are my sounds? Oh, hold on. I, Sorry. Hang on. Technical. All right. All right. For the movies, if in all of sci-fi, what <laughs> ship in all of sci-fi could destroy <laughs> the Death Star? We're going to start with Jody for this one. All right. I've made this very easy. Who is more trained to know what the weaknesses of the Death Star are than the people that created it? And so I decided to pick the executor class Star Dreadnought from Star Wars, which is better known as the ship that Vader runs around in. Uh, This is a 19 kilometer long ship. Uh, So it's a big boy. Uh, it also has a total of uh, thousands of people on board, uh, titanium reinforced hull, as well as 5,000 turbo lasers. Turbo lasers, I don't know how powerful each one of them are, but when you got 5,000 of them, it doesn't matter. A nice little, after you take over and try to destroy the Death Star and you have a little bit of problems and you want to weaken it up a bit, you also have your TIE fighters, your TIE bombers, and your TIE interceptors as well to help out with the fleet, uh, which is all carried on this one ship. Uh, so overall, familiar with the uh, familiar with the technology, <laughs> know its weaknesses, huge, and can definitely take it down. Oh, look at that. Right, nice and sweet. Got a star destroyer under the clock. Good, good answer, Jody. Good answer. But it's not over yet. We got Davin coming in. He's got a hot one on this one. What do you got for us, Davin? You, you can butter his toast all you like, there, Judge. But that was in fact not a good answer. The only good answer is mine, and that is Tatu, the world ship, which is Galactus's ship. Now, my uh, illustrious uh, uh, co-debaters here. Um, are basically arguing fleas on the back of my tiger. So Ta-2 is the size of a solar system. Yes, there it is. It actually has, like, has stars and planets caught in its gravitation. It has all of the most, in fact, Reed Richards says, an infinite amount of just mind-bogglingly powerful futuristic technology and an infinite amount of it. Like, it's, it, it's, one of its functions is to destroy solar systems. Okay. So like the Death Star is... Again, a flea upon what it can do. 
it's 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 almost hard to conceive of how mind-bogglingly huge and powerful the ship is. It's the size of a solar system. Like it doesn't even make sense. He he started. It's been he's been building it for millennia. Um, what and another thing it can do is devour planets specifically. So like like Death Star again is nothing. It's 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 mind-bogglingly crazy. <laughs> mind-boggling atmosphere of planet controlling ships that could eat a death star interesting i like it i like the concept eat a solar system. The, and a solar system it's, it's a whole bring it down I, I i think that's a solid answer but we still have one more contender in this house chris seymour what do you got for us that could take down the death star okay what i, I called this i knew this from the minute the question was asked chris just so what we all know. <laughs> let me guess it's voltron the answer is 100% Voltron. <laughs> Voltron's not a ship. Uh, the one from Legendary Defender. And I'm telling you right away, I knew your number one argument was going to be that Voltron is not a ship. Listen it's to not. me. Voltron is, uh, is driven by five pilots, okay? We got the black one, the green one, the red one, the blue one, the yellow one. They, it, it, it can, Voltron flies. It is a ship. It cannot be driven Without these guys in it, Voltron is not a robot. Voltron does not nope. die by himself. And he's, he is the defender of the universe. And there is nothing that has ever stopped Voltron before. There's nothing he's never defeated. He would bring out his mighty sword. All he has to do is bring out the mighty sword. And the Death Star would be cut in half. There is no debate about this. Um, there, it's, there's, there's, there's every episode of Voltron, and there's nothing that the mighty sword all right, has all right, never all right. this cut in half. Time, <laughs> time's up. So far, I've heard yeah. the mighty sword will cut the Death Star in half. Yeah, let me go concept. first here. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing how this is going to go down. I would like to jump in here. Why should my tiger have to debate these fleas? It makes no <laughs> sense. Like. My your your my ship could destroy the Death Star and my opponent ships here all at the same time without even noticing. They would just get caught in its gravity and torn apart. Like it's the size of a solar system. It has Galactus on it and all of the most crazy technology in in the universe. It's it it's not even a fair fight here. Like Davin, you're I don't I I've never even heard of your ship before. I don't even know. I mean, what comics. It is. So yeah, yeah, I'm not, I don't know what it is. It's yeah, right. Tattoo, he named after his home planet. I think you made it up for this argument. Oh no, <laughs> it truly, truly exists. There it is. He looked at the uh, Mobius strip shaped solar system mm -hmm. size size that ship. It's 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 not a fair fight, fellas. It can it, it's literally made to eat solar. Come systems. on, Joey, so, help me out on this one. Fight him. <laughs> there's oh, there's no fight I'm, to be had. I'm just waiting for you two to be done. Well, I <laughs> I'm that confident. Your little flea cannot do anything to my solar system of, of All right. I, technology. My turn now. I yeah, think my flea it. could destroy okay, it. So Davin's, sword. Okay, shut up for a second. Da Davin has come with the same thing that he always does, which is mine's bigger, so it's gonna win. All right. <laughs> no, whatever. it's still of infinite okay, technology. Number one, it's not even from the same universe. Who cares? And on top of that, it's in that a wasn't comic the question. book. You've never seen any realization All of, of this other than a comic book. In yeah, all of sci -fi. Like, yeah, I wouldn't call Marvel exactly sci-fi, really. But anyway, that's it's absolutely science fiction, ah, especially whatever. the fantastic science fiction space-driven stories. Yeah. Anyway, and as for uh, as for Voltron, yes, um, I think you've lost a little bit on the calculation of the size of your vehicle versus the size of the Death Star. Like you're telling me, it could just slash it with its blade. It would take yes. years to do that well, because it's you way know, bigger. Uh -oh. It and it would like take millennia to do that to the my thing. Yeah, and also good. if a ship takes a millennia to make, yeah. Uh, number one, mine uh, the 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 uh, 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 sorry the Death Star is in a galaxy way beyond far far long time ago. All right, so <laughs> right your ship is created way past the era of uh, of uh, the Death Star even being No, no, there. we're talking galactic time here. This ship was still built galactic before any of that time. silly Star Wars oh, stuff. Because it's happening. a galactic ship. No, because he was born like Galactus was born okay. a million okay. years okay. after okay. the okay. Big okay. Bang okay. and anyway, then he I'm built his ship. It, Davin's yeah. got the same excuse which is I've got oh. something bigger. Yeah. No, it's Hold just it's, right. it's, so, a, it's a pause, solar pause, system pause. size ship that eats solar systems and has Galactus on it with infinite technology. 
<laughs> All right, pause. Okay. So Dave asked the made a comment. This is a movie question, right? Are Chris and Davins in the movies? Uh, it, the well, movie will be portion very of the the, the <laughs> I, I movie portion of the question is the Death Star. I yeah. emphasize in all of sci-fi, it could be written, movie, television, whatever, because I feel like it's a large genre. These fit within the category, so yes, I believe their answer is uh, substantial. That being said, from what I've heard, I'm pretty confident on the choice I want to make, but I'm going to give you guys one minute each for final thoughts. Jody. Uh, Seymour is is out of the water. I don't even need to bother with it. Uh, as, as, for, as for Davins, again, just because you can sit here and bark about how yours is bigger and how it kills solar systems and stuff, it's never bothered to be in the same universe, so you don't know if it's even compatible to kill it. You have no what? idea. We are, we're talking about multiverses here, and I'm picking the thing oh, from yeah, all these multiverses it, and, and Marvel, licenses. It's Marvel, so it has to be multiverse. Is, yeah. We're talking about all of sci-fi relating to Star Wars. We're talking oh, about man, multiverses. You are That's the question. Strings here. So I anyway, chose my, the thing. My, my all technology of, exists in the same universe. And so therefore, I'm just, it would right, isn't the question. All right, I'm, Jerry, you heard you, Chris. Voltron is a defender of the universe. He's never lost. He's the defender of the universe. He can defend the universe. That's his job. That's what he does. All right, Davin, do you have any there final thoughts? Well, look, I was going to choose to Defiant for fun, but then I'm like, you know what? What is the craziest ship I can think of in all of everything I've ever encountered? And that's Tatu. It's it's ridiculous. It, it makes no sense. Galactus could destroy your guy's stuff by yourself, by himself easily. And the, this, right, his ship right, is I've the made size of his own. I've made my choice. <laughs> I've, I've made my choice. Uh, first off, Chris, the, the, there's no way in hell a tiny sword's going to cut through the Death Star. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not it's a mighty sword. <laughs> I'm sorry. A tower-sized sword is not going to cut through a fucking planet. I'm sorry. It's just not happening, Chris. I'm sorry. Well, it's between eventually. Jody and Davin at this point. Jody, I did love your points. Uh, I, I love the, the specs that you gave on uh, Vader's ship. However, I didn't hear how it could actually destroy the Death Star. You gave specs and, and barometers, and you did mention turbo lasers, but I don't honestly see a bunch of turbo lasers destroying the ship. Also, the, the question, fact that the question, I can't see Vader. The, the question had nothing to do with how it would do it. It just said what could do it. So well, why do I need to argue involved that? In that? Okay, well, to be fair, it's turbo lasers versus an entire solar system that swallows planets and has infinite amounts of power and technology. <laughs> I have to give it to Davin for this point. Yeah, All right. Marvel shill. Anyway. Anyways, I said not my, my Voltron would destroy it. I did say how. Your Voltron is with garbage. Sword. Get over it. <laughs> with a sword that he would... I am Galactus. I devoured it. Right, we're moving on to TV. We're moving on to TV. Probably Here be we the only one you'll win. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Korean drama, Extraordinary Attorney Wu is quickly climbing up the Netflix charts. And it got me thinking, what other show involving a, a lawyer or attorney as a protagonist would be considered better than the rest? Uh, we started with Joey last time. So Chris, let's start with your answer. Okay, my answer um, is uh, a show that I really enjoy watching. Um, it's on TV. It's uh, is um, it's called Bull, um, and he is a um, uh, what what Bull does is he is a, a jury selection specialist. Um, yeah, there he is. There's Doctor Bull right there. He's a jury selection specialist, and I really enjoy watching this show. Like I look forward to every episode. Um, like he, uh, he, he weeds out, um, uh, like he gets like cases against them that are like insurmountable. They seem insurmountable, like a murder case or a child rape case or something. And then he, he chooses the jurors properly, um, to, to, uh, be people who are understanding to that situation. Um, and it's, it's just amazing to watch how he does it. And, and the clients are so um, thankful after. Like I, I've I've seen episodes where he loses cases. Like he doesn't even win, but it's just an amazing show to watch. All right, we got Bull from Chris. He's uh, an amazing show to watch, from what I hear from Chris. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna move on to Davin with his answer. 
or the Lori attorney question? All right, mine is Boston Legal. Boston Legal is one of my favorite shows ever, and I don't really like lawyer shows. Um, but it's just a insanely good written show. Um, it's funny. It has a lot of drama, wit. It has, um, like, uh, just standout actors, and the roles they play are, like, perfect for those actors. Like, you've got... For Star Trek lovers here, we've got uh, Odo there. We got William Shatner, Candace Bergen, Murphy Brown. We got James Spader. I mean, even the other actors that come in and out. Betty White's in this show, and she's amazing. Um, it, it created the bromance, the bromance between Alan, James Spader's character, and um, Denny Crane, William Shatner's character, are is is legendary. Like they they sleep in the same bed, like. It's, it's freaking hilarious. Um, they're flamingos, they call themselves, because male flamingos mate for life um, or pair up for life. Um, uh, it's William Shatner's best role. William Shatner's best role is not Captain Kirk. It's Danny Crane, and it's it's an amazing show. So Davin's for Danny Crane, Boston Legal, and James Spader. An excellent Danny answer. Crane. I do agree. Uh, Danny Crane, sorry, yes. And with the final answer, we got Jody. What do you got for us, Jody? All right. Well, I didn't pick two terrible choices like they did. Uh, I picked Better Called Sal, uh, which is the trials and tribulations of criminal lawyer Jimmy McGill. I figured someone was going to choose that. Well, yeah, because y'all probably tried to. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, so Saul I don't Goldman, care about Saul. Is actually a, uh, is obviously not his real name. Uh, he was originally Jimmy uh, Jimmy McGill, uh, and this is before. So this is like a prequel to Breaking Bad, which was also a very good show. Uh, but the the best thing about this show is it's got good humor in it. Uh, it's got uh, really interesting storylines at times. Uh, and on top of that, it's got a character that really you don't know if you want to root for him or if you want to see him fail. Uh, so it has all those things. On top of that, it's got an IMDb rating of, of 8.9 currently as of this recording. Um, which is actually higher than both of the other ones that were already mentioned. Uh, wow, solved. I am <laughs> well, no, not necessarily solved, but I, I'll, I'll tell you later why. Uh, but overall, it's just a better show, uh, in my opinion. Now, Boston Legal is a good show, don't get me wrong. Nope, yeah, that's time. So, we got the, the jurors in the stand, which is Boston Legal, Bull, and the like, like, better call Saul. So now it's up to you three gentlemen to debate who is better of them all. You know what? I think my show uses like, a, it, like it, it's interesting because they use the, the, the main protagonist, Bull. He's a very cocky guy, yet he uses like high tech technology, um, human intuition uh, to understand the jurors, to understand the, the trial lawyers, to understand the witnesses. And it's, it's just... Like it, it makes for such an interesting show to watch because you never know the twists and turns that are going to happen in it. Is he a um, lawyer? Like what? Is he a lawyer? His brother-in-law is the lawyer in the I show. I don't care. Is he a lawyer? <laughs> His brother-in-law is the lawyer. Is he a lawyer or Benny? Because that's lawyer. exactly the what the question said. In the in the show, they are both the protagonists. Um, so yes. <laughs> <I> would... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he runs a, he right, runs a right. housing Look. corporation. Denny yes. Crane. Denny Crane. It's a legal show. Look, look, I if better call Saul, I don't know anything about it, but if it's like uh Breaking Bad, I can get three episodes into Breaking Bad. So whatever. It's like oh, well, clearly, popular of the, the type of TV at the popular. time, whatever. But Boston Legal is timeless. Whoa, you episode of that on right now. Bad. It's amazing. Um the reason Boston Legal is the best though is it does have that thing that kind of it has a lawyer show no it has that thing that <laughs> well that's how like you lawyer, started your lawyer show, like got lawyer shows are trekking it <laughs> lawyer shows have that perry mason moment you know what i mean at the end of the show where like the lawyer you know makes his case and that's supposed to win over the audience and the jury at the same time and that sort of thing and it's like there are morality plays and that's what boston legal does and it's also the journey of two wildly selfish characters danny and alan and how their friendship makes them both better people and it's it's so it has that connective tissue but it also has that individual episode perry mason moment thing that defines a lawyer show and alan's usually the one to deliver that and it, it, it's his speeches at the end of these shows are just incredible um 
whatever. Better call Saul. Psst, get out of here. And Bull, I, is he a lawyer? Like, whatever. He's get not out a here. lawyer. <laughs> you know what? Bull, Bull was actually, um, Bull was actually uh, manufactured after a guy named Phil McGraw, who yes, was a real was not a lawyer, um, who, who actually did this for a living. And was um, not so, a lawyer. So it's my my show has more of a uh, not a made up factor, but like this actually and not happened. a lawyer. This stuff actually yeah. happened. And mine was written by the uh, writer and creator of The Practice, another very popular lawyer show. Yeah. And it was actually a spinoff of The Practice. In, okay, like, okay, okay. I'm hearing a lot of, like, what the show is, but I'm not hearing arguments of who's better of the three. Oh, um, mine's better so because it has I'm, everything. It has that Perry Mason thing. It, so it is that want, lawyer mine's... show type. But it, it, it's okay, so okay, hilarious. Okay, one at a time here. So we'll start with Davin. Give us one minute. I'm going to do final thoughts. It's, it's, oh, it's hilarious. It, it's here. freaking hilarious. And the characters, like, I can't, like, to have it in the in a show, again, William Shatner, James Spader, Betty White, Rene Aubourgeois, Candace Bergen, and they're all acting their asses off. Like, they're, this show is taken incredibly seriously by the people in it and that write it. And it's one of the best shows ever made. It, 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 each episode is infinitely re rewatchable. And... So Again, this, it has that lawyer is, thing. It's it is a lawyer show. These other shows don't so strike me as lawyer is, shows. Right, they just have really good to... actors on it. Yeah, 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 yeah no, yeah, and for great performances right. and great characters. Like you know what my argument, characters that my these argument, actors have played. My best argument is that the, the show is very unpredictable. Like Bull doesn't even always win. Is so, he a lawyer? Like, I hate watching lawyer shows. Can't win. You know, like the win at what? Win. Poker. He's a consultant <laughs> for, for juries. That's all he is. Like. Come on, have you ever watched You're the show, stretching Joby? hard on this one. Have you okay, ever watched the show? I'm going to make this really easy. You know what's nice about Better Call Sal? Is the fact that I get to see the other side of the equation. I get to see the the, the crime, the all, all, all of the bad things. Because somebody has to represent the bad people too. Okay? You guys get the, oh, you know, everybody's just trying to be the hero and win. You know, Sal's just trying to not die. Uh, oh no, you know Boston what? Legal. Trying to not get killed all the time by all these shady people that are around them and stuff like that. It it makes for a more entertaining show. Why do I want to see twenty shows that are the exact same things when I can have one that is completely different? All right, I've heard it. I've heard enough. That's 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 enough for me to decide the choice here. Um, I don't want to be stereotypical and uh, pick the obvious choice here, but I think I have to pick the obvious choice, which is Better uh, Call Saul. I'm why sorry. Is that the but, uh, why uh, is that the obvious choice? Chris is one well, based on what Jody said. No, well, yes, exactly. Based on what Jody said, he mentioned the IMDb rating. He mentioned the uh, highly acclaimed Breaking Bad and the show that it's connected to um boston legal although you didn't make a lot of great points about boston legal and i was about Good to show. give it to you uh when you were like i've only watched three episodes of breaking bad and you turned it off i was like oh, yeah it was bad i don't, I don't <laughs> think you no no breaking bad is one of the greatest shows but that's an argument for another day everybody Chris, you should have you daredevil said, <laughs> yeah, uh, oh be, daredevil's great daredevil show. Daredevil would have been, my second been an excellent answer. That Daredevil would have been a better been pick excellent. than Bull. <laughs> you know what it's the true. problem is? Bullshit. Okay. I knew that I was the last guy to get my question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, un unfortunately, well, how many so, people tried to pick the, the biggest? Ball? The biggest spear against Bull <laughs> was when Jody's like, "Is he? Is he? Is he a lawyer?" And you didn't answer if he was a lawyer, yes or no. And honestly, no. that was like the clincher for your question. It was, like, it was yeah. over. It was, right it was the question. point going to Jody. I got to call it. IMDb. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> oh. All right, moving on. Uh, I'm gonna, moving let on. me Google IMDb. Maybe your galactic <laughs> it was an excellent round. to take down you their servers. <laughs> you made a good. You made good points, Stavin. Oh, uh, no, it, this as, question. Uh, it wasn't about the cast. It was about who was better. All right, we're moving on to music scene. I wanted to throw curveball at you guys. I want to know who's the best yeah. punk band to come out in the past 10 years. They would have had to have formed within the past 10 years or potentially even uh, reformed if they were set up earlier. But it would have to have been some form of they would have to have live tour, played music or something within the past 10 years. So we, uh, we're going to start with, wait, who did we start with last time? Was it Chris? Uh, Chris, we started with last time. So, yeah, Gavin's turn. Time it would be Davin. Oh, joy. 
<laughs> All right. So I don't know anything about punk music, except what you, I've heard from like older punk and stuff a little bit. But anyway, not a fan. So I consulted a friend of mine, and my friend assured me that punk is in fact dead. And having listened to uh, some new punk in preparation of this question, I think he's correct. Actually, when did punk become bubblegum? <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. Um, but anyway, my answer is, uh, I don't even know. What is it called? Atlantic something. This is going Something Atlantic. Um, <laughs> so the, the reason I chose this band is because they're Australian. And, you know, I mean, again, they don't sound like punk music. None of them do. They, know, they sound like bubblegum pop. But if that's what punk is, then these guys are great because they're Australian. And what's more punk than Australia? Poisonous snakes, romper, stomper, <laughs> you know, punk shit. So um, there you have it. Random request to husband. <laughs> All right. So we got Atlantic Stand from Davin. Oh, yeah. Atlantic Stand. Uh, that's Atlantic stand, not stand Atlantic. Okay, Atlantic stand. Uh, oh, it's stand Atlantic. Is it stand isn't it? Atlantic. Is it yeah. stand Atlantic? Atlantic. All right, yeah. stand Atlantic. It is. Uh, Australia doesn't yeah, have the Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean. That doesn't make. I know, sense. right? That wouldn't it make more sense? Was, anyway, <laughs> we're we're digressing. We're gonna move on to Jody with his answer for the best punk band in the past ten years. All right, I picked a band called Neck Deep, which is a Welsh punk band. Uh, they're known for pop punk, uh, which is something that Devin, I guess doesn't like uh these guys yeah. were formed in 2012 um they were found by uh two guys which is ben barlow and uh lloyd roberts um the thing that's nice about these guys is they look been... at these punks <laughs> <laughs> i guess i guess it depends on how you define what punk is right uh but yeah. they're, they're they stand they're for essentially... expensive hats all right, yeah. Devin. All right, Devin. Yeah, Sorry. Anyway, uh, these guys have been compared to like Blink 182, Newfound Glory, Wonder Years, uh, Green Day, uh, The Descendants, stuff like that. Uh, they've also done work with Fallout Boy as well as Sum 41. Um, these are these are guys that definitely know what it is, or at least what they're going for. Uh, I don't know anything about Devin's answer. I've never heard of them. Uh, Me neither. So, uh, but these guys, uh, for instance, their second studio album, which is Life Not Out of Get You. Uh, life's not out to get you. Sorry, um, that's her second studio album, uh, which released in 2014. It's actually very good. All right, so, plus her on Spotify. Uh, neck deep from Jody. We're neck deep into this argument. So, Chris, what do you got for us? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I love that Dave said on uh, on 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 the chat that like Chris, I don't think punk is your thing. Uh, I was <laughs> I was actually security. <laughs> For Punk Fest in 1996 and 1997, 1998, I broke my leg at Punk Fest because I was running through the forest, and I stepped <laughs> over a log. Uh, that's when I first broke my leg. So punk music is definitely my thing, and I chose a band called Sheer Mag. Um, Sheer Mag is an awesome band. Um, the the lead singer there, Tina. Like, look at these guys. These guys look like punk. Uh, they got well, no. Where did punks become hipsters? Especially, <laughs> especially the guy on the left. Um, yeah, it, looks, guys, right. it looks like he could be a mannequin at Old Navy. Save, save your arguments. Save your arguments. Um, but uh, like, I am the most punk here. I've actually seen these guys at the marvelous, the marvelous lounge downtown in Brantford. Um, they've come up here to play. Uh, their their music is uh, like it can go anything from like seventies rock to hardcore punk. And her voice is like fucking a Janis Joplin voice, but like a high pitch. And oh, it's amazing. She just terrible. like screams it, and it's like hey, with all the raspiness, and it's amazing. It, it blows my mind. All right, so we got sheer mag from Chris, and he's he's come packing with a full mag of arguments. Murphy, you're more mag. punk than any of these bands. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't argue I agree, with that seriously. Statement. Now, Come now on, just Rick. just to, yeah. just to answer some comment yeah. questions from Random Rick, has there been a punk? Yeah, band <laughs> exactly. Band? Yes, there has. Uh, to name three, Amel and the Stiffers, Idols, like there's great punk bands going on. There's right awesome punk bands in the Australian sea. Um, and yeah, they do look like punks who turn their school work on the time for, for right. our next week. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're right, yeah, let's get to the art. They need to right change the start. Start it off. Jody, let's start it off. Let's hear from you. What All do you right. got for us? So one of the most popular music services right now is obviously Spotify. They have quite a huge base. Oh, more um, right, ratings from Jody. Here's why ratings. Spotify no, these says aren't ratings. Name. These aren't ratings. These are actual oh monthly God. listeners, Devin. These are people that we Same have deal. listen. Oh uh, so for instance, Neck Teep this currently isn't a has debate. 
2.5 million listeners monthly. Uh, the next one up is actually yours, Davin, which is 1 million. Uh, and Sheer Mag has 80K. Uh, you know what? I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm in the punk culture though. I'm not like, I'm hey, not you're more punk than these bands too. On, I'm not basing my answer on what I found on Google. That's oh, not okay. what the punk culture is about. It's, I didn't, I didn't find that on Google still either. still 100% but... of it. It's just gone underground a little bit and that's the way everyone likes it. They could have one obsessive fan that's just like. I think the numbers are really what speaks here, and the fact that you have two point five no, no more numbers. listeners, two point five million listeners Not monthly, monthly. Uh, that means there's two point five million people monthly that listen to I could have just googled the that stats before this debate and picked all the number the ones. Fans that have been on that. Like whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> David, interrupting me isn't time. going to make your argument any better. Yeah. Davin, let's hear. By, let's hear by your, Jody's let's metric, hear the best movie of like ever is Titanic, and that's insane. Like, no. so let's like leave the numbers aside because the numbers are oh, bullshit. The numbers anyway. hurt you hard, don't they, Davin? <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, literally, look, you're, you're really there. upset about the numbers. I'm not. I'm gonna go pick up my guitar and strum one chord, and then I will be a more punk band than these bands. So you have how many listeners <laughs> on Spotify? <laughs> Some, but for my podcast. Um, Excellent. But again, I don't care about the numbers. That's not what this debate is about. If we're just going to do the numbers every time, Who is this is going to be a real boring punk debate. Band to come out in the last <laughs> ten years, oh, I the Australian one good. because things are more punk down there, and they actually, well, oh yes, you know, they're the guy in the left. The, no, punk they're punk. hipster. Well, no, none of them look like punks. I can't even defend. They're known for big Mine's ass fighters because dude. that that song I did listen to was actually pretty catchy. The in one the chorus. song, and my buddy, my buddy Coots says that their second album has no skips. I don't know the guy. The guy, the guy who should win this might so be that's, the that's guy high that praise. actually goes out and listens to the music, and not the guys who. Yeah, my buddy Tech Deep is already in my playlist, and that's why Whatever. they came to me first. All so, right, I mean, I'm, I'm starting to think. Okay, I think I've got a. I think I've I've made my choice based off of these arguments, but I'm gonna give based off of uh, one minute each for final <laughs> thoughts. So, uh, Jody, final. I don't thoughts. even need one minute. Uh, I've given you the numbers, Judge. The numbers don't lie. These are these are the oh, listeners. Wow. These are the people. Oh, sir, there's Davin interrupting again because wow. he can't handle it. <laughs> can't handle real life facts, there, can you? Uh, anyway, the, that's not what a fact is. That is a fact. That's a statistic. <laughs> Statistics and facts. All right, are the same Davin, okay, let anyway. him have his final thought, please. Anyway, does right, you know just... what? I don't. He's so threatened that he has to interrupt me. I'm good. Let, no, I expect to lose right. this question. All right, um, Chris. You know <laughs> punk cannot be judged by a Google guy or a guy who doesn't like punk, who is below me. Punk should be defined by people my who actually like it and go and see it. David, <laughs> well, look, final thoughts? The best thing I can do, because I am at a disadvantage here, admittedly, but I can poke some holes in my opponents here. So Jody... <laughs> Screw the statistics. Tom Waits is a better musician than every punk band in the world combined, and some of them may have more hits than him. I hope not, but you know what? Statistics are bullshit. It has nothing to do with musicianship. Who's better than who? I'm a musician. I can tell you that. So, Active listeners Chris, is bullshit. So yours is bullshit. Yeah, okay. So, yes, because it's like you all you have to That's like saying do is like convince a bunch bullshit. of 12-year-olds your music is good. It doesn't make Nielsen it good. ratings are bullshit anyway, to you too, eh? So, it's just three people who turn it on to their VCR is good. You got 20 Nielsen seconds ratings are full of holes. And Chris's, um, what did you pick again? Oh, yeah. You yeah, said, you don't even know. So here's why mine, mine is valid. <laughs> so, yes, I don't listen to punk. but So I'm coming at it from a complete outside. So it's like punks can argue about what's better punk till the cows come home because they'll have their own preferences. But I don't have any of those. So I, I would never in. argue. I listened to this Stand home. Atlantic. Okay. And up. the song Time's I listened up. to was quite catchy. quite catchy. Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> Time's up. All right, we're good. All right, well, based off of these arguments, uh, I'm going to give this one to Chris because uh, he's right. He's 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 more in tune with the punk scene. I listen and to these punk bands. bands. How, how, it, how can you judge that he's bands. more in tune with the punk scene because he got drunk and, and fell over a log? <laughs> Which is it. punk as shit before it got yeah, all hits. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, he broke his leg at a punk show. You can't get yeah. more punk than that. I wore I mean, mascara once. And it, it, does that well, make that, me goth? That just... <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with the judge. Chris should win this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris is winning this one. Chris, between, Chris did between win the, this the look of sheer mag 
and and just his his uh, his knowledge of his punk, and he you know understands what? what it is. If Plus, anybody was going to win that, lie. I'm good with Seymour. <laughs> yeah, see, like at a, at a reality, I listen to all three of these bands, and Sheer Mag was the one that sounded most like a punk band to me. The other two sounded like emo bands, and I was like, "Yeah, ah, man, that's, that's what it is." The line. So nothing that's to do with the the, no. nothing to do with the debate at all, eh? Well, no, 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 no. no I no. wanted to see whatever had to do with the debate. Notion? He broke his leg I at a punk with, show there, Spotify stats. I came with stats. notion, but I wanted to come in with, listen to the arguments. Jody, all you gave me was stats and being like, they've got 2.5 million. Can, that makes them the best. Yeah. Like, that can, can we take a bet? That's not the only thing I, I, said. I said. I said it was a great music. album. Her second album was phenomenal. He's just salty. He lost to Seymour this round. Can we take oh, bets on which website uh, Jody consults for statistics on this next question? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's all go. Right, all right. Either way, Chris gets the point. We're moving the fuck on. Let's see. Oh boy, what's It's right? time for history. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, sports, no, sports. CNN.ca says that oh, one wait, million no, people like sports. <laughs> sports goes oh, next. Gavin. All right, sorry. Not history, sports, sports, sports. It's going to hurt so sports. much when you fail. What is the best <laughs> sport that involves a table? This is the question that I wanted to see what the answer. The best sport that involves I a table. I thought we were doing history. Sports right, comes what, after music. Are we doing music. sports or history? We're doing sports. Yeah, sports comes after me. We're doing sports. Oh, okay. Well, when he gave it to us, it was in reverse order. I okay, know. no problem. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, Davin, what is yeah, I just went first. the best table? Oh, did you guess what? No, I thought that I think uh, I'm uh, first. It's now. Jody's turn. Jody's, Jody's turn. Oh, Jody. God damn it. Somebody tell me who's first. <laughs> anyway. I, I, I got you. I got you. Okay. Jody. <laughs> it's, it's okay. You're still doing great, Chris. You got you. Not Seymour. Time starts. <laughs> No. Brown right. noser. So the best the best sport that involves a table. Uh now obvious the obvious choice is probably gonna be something like ping pong or something because you know that's an Olympic event and stuff like that. Uh but you know what? At trivial debates, we like to go around the norm sometimes so i went with billiards now i don't know why we picked this pitcher for it but <laughs> many other pitchers that are much better uh but that's fine this is the greatest uh, billiards picture ever what are you saying billiards is loved from uh, from far and wide uh you know this is this is something that people that are old play these are you know kids love it uh, everybody enjoys it. And the thing that's fun about it is there's always that element of surprise. There's always that shot that doesn't go the way it does, or it goes better than it should have. Um, so it makes for an interesting sport. And I just think it, overall, it's, it, it's a fun sport to watch. Now, billiards obviously has various variations such as, you know, obviously snooker stuff like that. Uh, but just overall, I think it's a fun, uh, fun, fun time on a table. Fun time on a table with Jody and Billiards. <laughs> Let's see what we got from Davin. All right. Here we go, I Davin. Think Chris is next, actually, but whatever. But I can go next. Doesn't matter. I'm just going from top to bottom and like going down the row. But yeah, all right. Let's go with Chris. All right. Um, you know what? Um, billiards was one of my choices, but then I was like, no, that's too common. I'm going to choose something that's a great table game. I'm going to choose air hockey. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we chose this picture for it. Oh, that's even better. Um, but you know what? This is a sport. This is this is a, a tabletop sport that I spent like quarters and quarters and quarters in at the arcade when I was a kid. When I was like 17, 18 years old, I would go there. I I I freaking love this game. Um, it's just like a little a little plastic puck that goes back and forth. It's like a pong like game. It's like the video game ping. Like Pong. It's like Pong, but it's with a puck. And it's super <laughs> amazing. It bounces off. <laughs> it's fast moving. Um, it requires immediate reaction time. It's an amazing game to play. Oh, is that it? <laughs> it's like Pong with a puck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> let me just carry off on that tangent. Well, so Chris's is good because it's like Pong, which is a, a video game uh, adaptation of ping pong so he's saying his is good because it's like a, a bad version of mine so get out of here chris um so here's the thing we can we can say we can argue which one of these things we like better personally i would still say ping pong but here's why mine answers the question the best billiards isn't a sport jody said that himself he says mine is in the olympics mine is, is an olympic sport ping pong just because something isn't in the olympics doesn't make it a sport most sports end up in the olympics um okay most billiards sports. actually okay. see pool you but you chose was pool or billiards pool is a sub like a subcategory of 
billiards, which is a catch-all term for something that isn't a sport. They're something separate than sport. They are billiards. They're a, ta they're a tabletop game, just like air hockey. Those are both very good you're really games. really threatened when you're using but they the aren't time sport. to bitch about mine. That's amazing. No, no. Well, mine is fantastic. Ping pong is so fun. Yeah, it takes skill. You have to get good at it before it becomes very fun. But that's what, again, is like a sport. Like being shitty at hockey isn't fun. Being shitty at basketball isn't fun. The better you get at these things, the funner they are. Ping pong is amazingly fun. Okay, being an ex First of all, from Devin, let's hear the arguments. Being in the Olympics doesn't make it a sport. Like equestrian dresses is a freaking <laughs> sport. In the yeah, that's a sport. That according according a sport. to the Olympic Committee, it is. But the horses are the athletes. Horse. Okay, uh, like horses air are hockey the athletes. is is like fuck. You can hurt yourself in air hockey. You put what are you doing at air hockey? Puck. <laughs> it, 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 it can hurt. Um, there's rules to air hockey. Um, there's like if if the puck bounces out, like you don't you don't um, you don't get your point. If the puck doesn't, if it tilts down and the other player can pull it out, you don't get your point. There's certain rules that makes it a sport. There's there's certain rules that does not make it a sport. And it's it's a tabletop analog of a sport. Air hockey. It's a tabletop. Like it's like the video game pong. It's like just like you said. It's it's just like, like pong. So a sport yes, exactly, is which isn't a sport. A sport pong is, is a video a game. Activity involving yeah. physical exertion or skill. Oh, my God. He did. What is this website, Jody? Which website did you consult, Jody? Jody? Hey, Jody, can we know the website? <laughs> I'm just looking it up to make sure I'm okay. We have it. bets here. People made bets on this at home. What? So we, what, which website you were going to consult? Oh, is Gavin, is sport? this your only argument you have? You're so threatened that you have to do that. Are you, what do you mean? You're the one with You're the so crutch threatened. of the internet searches. I'm sitting here debating. I'm giving you facts. I'm not the one with the crutch here, facts. man. Do you know what facts what? are? If you think everything you look up on the internet is a fact, billiards you got some isn't a sport, but... according to you. It's not. Okay. Are not so if if not in that? comparison, certainly to table tennis, which is in the Olympics, which is incredible it is, to watch. And I quote, you can barely see an it. Individual and they can somehow or hit it team back. competes against another or another for an entertainment. Entertainment. What is more of a sport, the thing in the Olympics or the thing like drunks play at a bar? Like it's it's ping pong. It's 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 the best you don't have to be drunk example to of a sport There's among these professional leagues things. for billiards with and among anything played on a table. Ping pong is. Hey Jody, here's what sport. I just googled. What's that? Although it's... air hockey is a professional sport, at this time I said, <laughs> see exactly the, Olympics, the internet is so internet. reliable in its searches. That. That's why There's we should so definitely use the yes, internet. He has right, a right. global right. communication network okay. that harvests oh. most of human oh. intelligence is wrong. Yeah, some of those are just games. Right. Oh. The guy oh. who's oh. drunk oh. in Nova oh. Scotia oh. oh. is the guy oh. who's oh. right. Yeah, does anyone watch air hockey right. for entertainment? Oh. That is a stop. good question. Stop, stop, <laughs> stop, 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 okay. My game's fun to play. You can hold beer when you're not. Your uh, game uh, is you my sport. All right, all right. Give me a second to gather my thoughts here. All right. I heard one argument from Davin that has put a critical hole in the both of Jody and Chris's argument, and I haven't heard them argue that? against that. I'm oh, no, you're setting them up. Jody had just mentioned <laughs> Google. Well, Thanks, okay, Google. the other thing, too, I want to point out is I feel like everybody should refrain from using Google. I know you have a computer in front of you, but let's try yeah. and keep it like This is about debating. Right? That's Debaters don't get right. up on stage and start Googling stuff. Yeah. <laughs> now, that being That's said... I, hmm, I'm, I almost want to give final thoughts here, um, but I also don't want to point out the one argument because yeah, I don't exactly want to skewing. skew you two mm. to, to, to start. So, his so argument I'm going to give one minute final thoughts. Jody, right, go ahead. I'll go. Uh, so basically, Billiards is it's a fun game to play. You can play with your friends. It's a fairly relaxed environment. It's not too, you know, it's not too tense. Uh, plus, you can enjoy it while you're off work, for instance. You can also do it professionally if you want. Uh, it's a great it's a it's a great way of dealing with things. Um, and on top of that, you get to learn a lot. There's a lot of things that you can learn with Billiards. There's a lot of skill involved to do it correctly. Uh, but you don't have to be that. You can also just be the guy who just shows up and tries, and if he fails, well, we still had fun. Uh, ping pong is an exertion sport, and I will definitely give you the fact that it is a sport. Uh, all three of these are technically sports. Um, and with that, uh, same thing with air hockey. Air hockey is a fun time as well. However, I can't hold a beer and play at the same time. So, 
All right. Excellent final thoughts yeah. from Jody. Chris, hey. what do you got for us for final thoughts? Well, it's too bad that Jody can't hear hold a beer and play air hockey because I fucking can. I don't know how <laughs> hand to do it. I don't, I don't use both my hands on the freaking thing. I don't know what he does. I can eat wings <laughs> while I'm doing it. So I, I can I can hold a beer, I can eat peanuts. And you know what the best part is? You can play it with your fucking like your 12 year old. One other kid. person. And, no, you can play with your 12 year old kid. And the fact that when you slam that puck into the net and it makes that sound, it makes like when it goes Mine's into, a great community it's game. Awesome. It's the best sound in the world. When it jumps, when that puck jumps into the net, it's the best sound in the world. And you get the best feeling. You're just like, woo. And <laughs> you're looking just you're just looking forward to the next puck. And just the sounds of the game, like ding, 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 off the boards and <laughs> into the net. It's amazing. <laughs> Well, he's getting he's getting rabid over here. Chris is getting rabid with his answer. <laughs> Davin, what is your final thought? Uh, Chris's speech right there is more of a sport than uh, air hockey. <laughs> so, but but honestly, there is a difference between games and sports, and you have to be able to draw that line somewhere. And yes, it's maybe a hard line to draw. I don't think it is. I think one of the best metrics of that is the Olympics because it adopts sports, even new ones like snowboarding came in people are like yes that's a sport let's put it in you know what i mean and so ping pong is like i feel like you guys skewered your own arguments you said well can you play it while holding a beer it's just like most sports if you look in the friggin olympics which is a good example of something that encapsulates sport basically none of them you can play with a beer in your hand because that's what Roger, a sport is a sport is enough. an athletic I've heard competition enough. I've heard enough. I've made my choice. Davin, you're getting the point here. Uh, straight oh. up. Uh, why? Because he made the definition that uh, table tennis is a sport and the other two are just tabletop games. And I really didn't hear an argument against that. Uh, I'll, Joey, you did make a point like uh, between two people, it should be considered a sport, but it really they do fall more so under games. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to give Davin that answer for, for table tennis. Well done, sir. Um, to be fair, that was a loaded question. I was really hoping somebody would say wrestling because that's truly the best sport that involves a table. As Not a sport. Uh, random Rick reviews pointed out. <laughs> People watch Dungeon Dragons being played doesn't make it a sport. Good point, random. Good point. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, 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 Good Rick. debate, random gentlemen. Good truth. debate. All right, I now really we're like actually moving. Now fun. we're actually doing history. So yeah, just now we're favorite. doing history. Oh, now man. we're getting into history. It's gonna You're get all playing my stuff. game now, boys. You're in my Recently, now. the new Predator movie released called Prey, set in the era of the Comanche. I want to know what historical period of human history would make for a great Predator movie. Uh, Davin, this time. I think it's Davin. Sure. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's do it. All right, so mine is awesome. So picture this. This movie is going to be something we've never seen before. A group of people not often um, represented in, or ever really, in movie. And it, it has so many sweet historical uh, things you can work with. So imagine you're in the Persian mountains. Okay, the predator is walking through the Persian mountains. And it comes across just this kind of inexplicable castle in the middle of nowhere. And he enters this castle grounds and finds that it's actually filled with the Hashishan and the old man of the mountain. So the word having history of assassins actually comes from the word Hashishan. And they were, um, this old man of the mountain trained assassins to go out and do political hits and things like this in the mountains. And he fed them all, hash like got them all high off hashish because it made them like fearless and let their inhibitions go away. So the funny thing about this movie is from the perspective of the, the viewer of the movie the his and the perspective of the hashishan, they're just tripping out on hash because it was actually a psychedelic to them in those days. So it's like, it's this funny thing where it's like this action movie, but they're like, is it real to them? Cause they're just like, anyway, it's hilarious. Persian mountains. All right, so we got, we got Davin with the Prince of Persia versus Predator High on Hash. Uh, next, what do we got from you, Jody? <laughs> All right. Um, I, I decided to pick. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't even know how to follow that. It's so terrible. Uh, anyway, anyway um, I, I picked the Roman Empire. Uh, <laughs> And the reason why I picked that was because it would be great to see, for instance, 
uh, a fight between a predator and a gladiator. Uh, you know, you also have great set pieces for this. Uh, the one thing that makes predator a great, a great uh, thing to see is the fact of the fact that you don't see him often. Uh, and he also hides and stuff like that too. So when you think about like, for instance, the architecture in Roman times, stuff like that, it'd be kind of cool to see him like, you know, like hiding in a Colosseum and, and, and fighting tigers as well, you know, stuff like that. Like all, all these cool things that um, definitely could have happened. Like for instance, uh, you know, fighting like elephants, uh, you know, various other things like that. So the, the hunting isn't just the gladiators. It could be everybody. Uh, but you also have some of the nice, uh, you know, conveniences of like, for instance, you know, you know, hydroducts and stuff like that. Like it, it so for me to see something like this, I, I think it'd be interesting because like you, you, if you watch like something like Gladiator, for instance, imagine putting Predator in that like that would be incredible. Uh, it'd be amazing to see that like almost like a cave fight type situation. Uh, which would be cool. Tigers, elephants, and gladiators. Oh my, from Jody with that answer. <laughs> and not high on hash. <laughs> not high on hash. Uh, Chris, Hashish, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your answer for the history? Okay, my answer is um, a little bit uh, off from theirs. <laughs> my answer would be the 1960s. <laughs> the 1960s? <laughs> I'm intrigued. 20 years before the first movie. Interesting. Yeah, this, because this is a time of like <laughs> peace and love, and Woodstock was back then. And I Hippie think predators. like Predator would be awesome. It would be like like Predator would be like in the yeah the Predator would be like exactly like <laughs> this time, and Predator would be like in the back of a hippie van, and it would be kind of a like a comedy horror show. It would be like we would take from like Jay Muse status. It would just they'd be like in the back of the van, be like somebody would be like, hey man, I just fucked an alien, and then. Then the alien would laugh, and then they would kill him. And it, so it would be like a comedy. Have you seen mix. Predator? Yeah. What? <laughs> you know what Predator is about? <laughs> no, but no, they, they could do that. They could do that. Like, and it would be a, it would be a different kind of movie. I'd make a whole different kind of Predator movie. It would be all about peace and love, and and all about uh, and then and then they then they all get killed. <laughs> all right, all right. I gotta right, jump so in here. Got, I gotta jump in. Here. We got. Hang on, hang on. Wait, on. we got Predator Shag and Shaggy in the back of the van at Woodstock in 1960 yeah. from Chris. All right, these are excellent answers. Let's get to the debates. Davin, who is it going to be? Hash or, or okay? Or back in the Woodstock. Right, what's what? Are you, what? Give us your give us give us your answer. Okay, look, Seymour's is not the answer because that's again that's 20 years before the first one. It's like it's. The soldiers will look the same if there's soldiers. If not, it's just a massacre fest and it's a Jason movie, not a Predator movie. Predator, you want to see up against somebody who could potentially best them. So why Jody sucks is we've seen this. We've seen Greco-Roman armies against monsters and each other. And we've seen it. God, there's, awesome. there's enough Roman content out there. No, it's basically just 300 oh, since awesome. they made the what Persians monsters in that. It, like... It, it, it's boring. We've seen it. We haven't seen this. We haven't seen the Hashishan. And what does that mean? Like the initial assassins of history. What does that mean? We know that they were proficient with scythes, which is again something we haven't seen go up against a predator. Like a, an army you know what? I don't know about predator, but, 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 but I, it, like, it's an, it, I, I think you helped me out. I think you helped me out with my point. Like I think I think if, if that we've seen your movie before years before the predator even came out, like it, my movie would be a prequel. It would show why why they're all maybe prequels. The predator got so bad. Maybe he was just growing up. Maybe maybe my predator is a teenager. Maybe he's a horny teenager and he likes. Oh my god! See, I don't. I, I, I agree with Jody. You've never down. seen a predator movie. Well, would um, I go down? Then your <laughs> movie, my movie would be my movie would be funny. Your movies, your movies would just be another predator movie. My movie would be a great movie. <laughs> just ask the question. Uh, what would be a good predator movie? Right, My movie I... would bring in millions of dollars. I don't know. No, it wouldn't. Would. Yours would just be another predator All movie. All right. If you two are done, can I can All I right. talk now? All right. Predator I'm going to make this very hippies. easy for you, Judge, uh, respectfully. Uh, both of these guys have picked something to do with hallucinogens. Uh, basically, <laughs> um, if you put people on hallucinogens against a predator, they're going to lose. There's they, that's no not way the case they're going to win. There's no way they're going to win. <laughs> My, the, the people, the Hashishan of history, were given that it's Hashish gonna be a to make them more movie. proficient. 
it, it makes them more proficient in what they have to do. I'm they on lose the inhibition. Now no I'm dead. Because I'm so stupid be like that I can... These, three, these, these three original assassins... Movie. It wouldn't be a three-minute movie. Mine has great weaponry. Oh, We've Mine has a new setting. Stuff to it new characters. monsters and stuff like that. The, the uh, old man of the mountain. Like, that could be the final line. boss fight. Like, amazing, Gavin. Against... Every time I talk, you have to interrupt new me no matter what. You can't that let me, me have 10 seconds. It's amazing. I haven't even looked over at my section, screen yet. So. Take 30. This, this yeah, is anyway. loud. <laughs> yeah, can, can I? Do you mind? Uh, you know, we get, we got, we already have movies similar to this uh, with monsters and stuff like that against uh, against Roman uh, stuff. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you can get God stuff in there as well. The Greek gods you can even throw in if you wanted to. Uh, you know, stuff like that. It, it's it would just be a nice, almost kind of a cross between a fantasy and a sci-fi, uh, a sci-fi setting in a way, uh, which would be kind of cool as well. I just think overall it'd be fun. It'd be interesting. Uh, none of my characters would be high, uh, uh, so that would be an instant win as well. Uh, yeah, but like, look at this guy! Imagine this guy going against the predator. We've seen it. We've seen your movie, Joey. We've, we've seen, seen we your haven't. movie. If we saw it's, it, I would have already watched it. Jason in the Argonauts, three hundred. Yeah. We've seen. Yeah, we've seen the Romans go up against. That stuff. This is a method that would work great. Oh, the right, the original Hashish arguments. In interesting like it mine's just a new setting it's new characters old man of the mountain hassan sabah we haven't seen these stories told like i don't feel the need like, to argue that's so why the new the one was so interesting it's like what would be a good sequel to prey prey was interesting because it was a, a person in a group of people we don't get to see represented in film very okay, well. what? great warriors as they are what and that's what mine is it's not see? going do you want to see their movie or do you want to see fucking my movie do you no. want to see my i definitely yeah. don't want to see your movie yours is a jason movie I, I would be 13. okay with watching David's movie, but I'm pretty sure it would be a very short movie. Uh, you know, mine me. would be awesome. See? Absolutely awesome. Because history has proven that. We have movies similar to this. Exactly. So you change out a couple and of characters and you and watch it. Great, bang, it's awesome. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to re-emphasize what historical period of a human history would make for a great Predator movie. Yes. You're all making super good points, so I really need a final minute thought here. So, Chris, uh, I'm going to start with you. Tell me yeah. your final thoughts. Give me give me a reason. Well, you know what? I think it would be a great movie in a great period of time because the 1960s, um, you know what? It's a baby boomer era. A lot of kids growing up now don't know a lot about that era. They could learn about it. Uh, it would be a funny movie. Uh, be a predator movie. It could. It, it, uh, my movie would be a comedic action movie. My movie would combine both both elements. You have never it, seen it. A predator it would movie. be. Uh, <laughs> it would be educational. It would be hilarious. Uh, it would be. It would, it it would, would not it, fit into anything that they've done before. Come on, who's grown up? Who grows up now and knows it? Knows that Woodstock happened in 1969. They don't know everyone. That. Literally Imagine everyone. The predator everyone. came out in 90. Yeah. Imagine the Predator and I, because it started at the beginning of the that. 60s and ended 1969 at the end at the Woodstock. Uh, fucking eat, eat, fucking. Um, <laughs> You're arguing that Woodstock right, is more right. obscure than Hashishin eat, in the Persian eat, mountains. Eat, 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 eat Jimi Hendrix at the end. That's how he died instead of the eat Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> All right, so that's final thoughts from from Chris. It's uh, <laughs> about out there is all the people at Woodstock. Jody, uh, what's your final thought? Uh, I thought I've been pretty clear already on this, Chris, but I'll just emphasize that again. Uh, I think the Roman Empire is an interesting time period in time because of the fact that we have almost like an industrial thing starting. Uh, you know, you have some modern conveniences such as, you know, flowing water and stuff like that. Um, you know, these are these are all things that can lead to interesting, uh, interesting set pieces, um, such as, as I already said, something like, you know, for instance, Colosseum fighting, um, you know, stuff like that going through, you know, aqueducts and stuff like that. Um, oh, all, all, well, whatever you say, but anyway, it, it's it, to me, I just think that that's a great era to, um, to be putting into and i think the the warriors that came out of that type of area make for an interesting match for the predator all right Devin, final thoughts <sighs> all right chris is, is again it's like anyway <laughs> it's, 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 you, you skewed yourself it's not obscure it's not a predator movie mine would have a bit of humor just because of the whole hashishan aspect to it but Here's the thing. We've seen Jody's movie. It's just, and it, it, it situa situationally doesn't work. The Predator's not going to hang out in your Colosseum to fight gladiators. And what made Roman um, in armies uh, formidable was 
the fa- the phalanx in group work, which is not seeing so a much, Roman it, army which against isn't what a is predator? interesting. Come on, but, man. We've seen them against monsters a million times. Whereas, like Hessian, were stealth warriors. There's people that are into work out on in, an individual basis and like do combat on that. Yeah, that Assassin's like, Creed so movie it's like, worked really well. He can come across like all these different assassins coming at him with so many different things because they're assassins. They're not just gonna run at him with a sword like every freaking Roman warrior is gonna do. Or a spear. yeah, they're gonna assassinate a guy they can't see. It's different. It represents people that we've seen enough Roman stuff. We know, like, yep. Tried let's see. Let's death. let's experience the rest of history like Prey does. Let's present a group of people that are worthy of having their stories told. And the Hashishan is one of them. It's super interesting. And lo- it's loaded with myth, mixed with history. All right, all right. I've, 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 I've made, made my choice. Amazing. They're boring. I've made my choice. Okay, first of all, Chris, the 1960s, that that would be hilarious. But the, 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 the thing that sunk your battleship is, I don't know anything about Predator. That sunk your whole fucking army. I'm sorry. But like, after <laughs> that moment, I, I couldn't know, honestly. Predator. It was going to be educational. Come on, we were going to learn gonna something. Be... <laughs> It about can, the obscure really Woodstock funny. no one's ever heard of. Yeah, um, I really, I was like leaning towards giving it Chris just because of the absurdity of the answer, <laughs> but like I just creative. didn't hear enough examples other than Woodstock and killing Jimi Hendrix, and like, there just wasn't enough. <laughs> Which was offensive. And Jody, was awesome. Jody was bringing in hard hitting uh points, set pieces, uh, animal fights. Um, <laughs> all sorts of interesting facts but davin he really sold it for me with the give a chance to show character development for a culture which we don't know of the hashishans i'm giving this argument to davin because it was literally those final words those final thirds and your argument that sold the whole thing for me i was back and forth with all of you on this jody you were making really good points Davin did say it. we've seen a Roman movie like millions of times. There's different, very different versions. I, I'm, I think, <clears throat> biased. I think Prince of Persia versus Predator would be a great fucking film. High if the question man, was which yeah. movie would best sync the franchise, Chris would have had us. <laughs> oh yeah, no, yeah. Well, Chris Chris Predator, maybe that's what I wanted to see his movie. I so. would totally watch Chris's movie before I saw yours, though. It would be the last Predator movie you'd ever see. That's for sure. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so All we're right. going to get into the final question before final rounds. We got Davin in the lead with three and a tie between Jody and Seymour. So, gentlemen, it could be who gets to be in the final here. So, random question. Ebb Software uh, is uh, developing their upcoming, upcoming first-person survival horror, Scorn. The game is inspired by the works of visual artists H.R. Giger and Zedzla Bekskinski. I'm probably butchering that name. I am so sorry. Uh, I want to know from you guys, what famous artists would make for an incredible visual game design and bonus points if you can name a game studio with it? Chris. Bonus points name. for kittens? No. Always. Yay. You've already gotten enough bonus points this game. It's called awesome debating skills. It's called knowing the host right. for a long time. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Chris, guys, I think what, it's what got for talk us? here, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's your it time. Chris's turn to talk to him. All right. I'm going with uh, an artist called Monica Kim Garza. Uh, I don't know if you have any of her pictures that you can show up there. Oh, there you go. There's a picture of her. Um, and I, you know what? I think she would uh, work well with EA Sports. Um, this would be a friggin', this is going to be a, a, a Nintendo game, okay? It's going to be on Nintendo Switch. Um, and it's going to be like, um, <laughs> um, like chubby people playing sports. Because this is what she draws. She draws, <laughs> <laughs> she, draws, she draws a lot of chubby people, okay? And and most of the time they're naked. And I think it would make an amazing game. Imagine like like chubby naked people volleyball. There you go. There's a people there's a picture <laughs> that she did. Imagine like chubby naked people playing volleyball or playing golf. <laughs> Or like this is something that only EA Sports and Nintendo could do together, um, and it would be. I think it would be an amazing game. Like just you know what, it would, pr- it would promote wellness. It would uh, promote wellness. <laughs> I, I, I I I wasn't sure if he meant EA Sports or just EA games, but he was specific on EA Sports, and I was like, 
I think he just meant EA games, but no, he meant EA sports and he gave with excellent, uh, excellent examples of chubby naked people playing volleyball. I, I would probably play that. What, like, uh, why wouldn't you, right? Why wouldn't you? It, uh, Jody, uh, what, what artist do you got for us? Uh, well, I picked Picasso. <laughs> and I picked it with the studio Double Fine Studios. Um, Double Fine, if you guys aren't familiar with them, uh, they did a lot of interesting uh, games. Um, they also did a bunch of remasters as well, such as Grim Fandango, Day of the Tentacle. Uh, but they also did original IPs such as like Brutal Legend, um, Broken Age is another one. And one of my favorite games of all time, Psychonauts. Uh, Psychonauts, I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but basically it's, it's, it's a game that's totally out there uh and it basically takes place in somebody's mind um so when i got to that i i kind of thought you know something with psychonauts but with picasso let's say his blue period um somewhere like that i don't know if you have any references to his blue period but um the 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 art style that's not his blue period but anyway uh <laughs> but you could you could even use this technically uh when when we dream we dream realistically but when we play video games and stuff we have the we have the option to um, you know, kind of go more creativity. And I just think having something like a Picasso design uh, in, let's say, a adventure title uh, or a pick and, uh, pick and click adventure kind of title uh, would just be fascinating. I, I just think it'd be interesting graphic style. And that's really what the, the question's about. Picking Picasso from Jody, a solid choice with Double Fine Studios. Davin, who is your artist of choice for this question? I choose escher and it would be made by i'm making a super nintendo game and it would be made by konami who were all hits back in those days konami was the most consistent um oh i was hoping you show his art not his eyebrows but whatever uh, <laughs> is that his oh. art that is art yeah yeah so the thing about escher is yes he draws these just very strange worlds like a lot of people are familiar with like the ones with like you know staircases that go to nowhere and then you know you're coming out the opposite way like you know you could so it's like if that's the world and on, on which the game is played so it's like you can go in one door and you'll come out on the same screen but like upside down through another door going through another like it's just an interesting world to play sort of a bit of a side scrolling style game but you know a little beyond side scrolling because it's going to be all multi-dimensional and this kind of weird stuff but mm -hmm. so it would just be a, a game in an interesting setting um, with beautiful artwork, it would be interesting to just kind of walk through in the Escher world, and uh, I think it would lend itself well to like 16 bit. All right, so we got side scrolling Escher, point and click Picasso, and naked chubby people sports. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> give me your debates. You know what, right? <laughs> my naked chubby people sports game would be uh friggin' hilarious, and I, I think like it would be it would be a pretty sophisticated sounds like body shaming. It would be a pretty simple Why is it hilarious? It would have it would have like 8 bit music. It would be like do 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 and it would be it, it just I, I don't know people playing It sounds like body like, shaming to me. I don't like this game. If it's what? meant to be funny because the people are a little overweight, I don't like the the tone of this game. It's not it's funny. It's not funny. It's it's you said it was funny. What it, what it's doing is encouraging over people overweight people to get out there and do sports. It's not. It's not putting them down. It's showing. It's showing that over people, overweight people can do this too. It's not being funny. Dead air. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's I, how I stunned we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I. I don't know. He's making a great point. I'm not hearing anything else. I'm about to get. I feel like the point. guy from Billy Madison. Even respond to this because you know what is. It, it's just, it's, you know what? It's a great way of showing, like, hey, don't don't worry about your body. Just get out there and play. Well, it's yeah. nice to have a good positive body image, I exactly. guess. But EA definitely wouldn't be the studio to do that. Oh, they would. Uh, they're, they're, they're like the biggest sports company on the planet. Sports. The biggest sports company that makes money. And do you think that that <laughs> game is going to make money? Oh, yeah. <laughs> on the Nintendo, it will make huge money. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, we lost Avon, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, oh. Well, I guess I'll go while Davin's gone. Um, yeah. Yeah, Chris, uh, uh, yeah. 
All right. I think the silence speaks enough for Chris's argument. Um, As for mine, as for mine, having, having the diverse collection that is uh, (laughs) the device, diverse collection of different eras and phases of Picasso uh, (laughs) and having that into like an adventure type point and click type game, or just an adventure third person uh, type situation, I think would be really cool. Um, You know, imagine, imagine being in a world like this where you really don't know what is right, what is wrong where you're going a very confusing type environment as well uh which would lend very nicely to like a mystery adventure type game um i just think overall i think the art style that you have with picasso is 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 unrivaled in some scenarios um you know what monica kim garza is she she's a very talented artist but she does the exact same thing constantly um, well, and know, that's I one mean, thing that's going to get very boring in that game very quickly. Picasso uh, does the exact same constantly too. And you know what? If there was Picasso, a doesn't game, you realize how good... many eras of Picasso there is, dude? If there was a good game, to you make don't it, know a damn thing if about. There Picasso was a good game to make that. about Picasso. They would have done it in the last 140 years since he's fucking be dead. Picasso didn't die 140 years ago. Well, that's when he's born. Sorry. He was born 140 years ago. Can we fact check that? <laughs> uh, I was told not to use Google, so. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, D- Dave, Dave, producer, if you could fact check that, that'd be great. He was born uh, 140 years ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking that up now. They would have done it in the past 140 years. Uh, he was yes, born because video eight- games have been around for 140 years. He was born in 1881, so uh, that would make uh, it. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, about 140 years. Yeah. 141 years. Uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. I'm close enough. It's irrelevant anyway because it's not like we've had video games for 140 years. <laughs> um, I really would love and to as for hear Gavin, what Gavin's thoughts on this, but he's completely here. I'll, I'll simply dabbling for you. Uh, Jody, you're wrong. And you use Google and statistics all the time. <laughs> and Chris, you're stupid. <laughs> there you go. I just did everything Davin would have said. Because your answer is absurd. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, well, it's clearly I mean, the only I, I kind of, I like without Davin here to speak his portion, uh, and also he's like in the lead here. So like, what's uh, all right? We'll figure that out. Um, well, I think that's up to Dave. This, this at this point is between Jody and 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 Chris, and I got to give it to Jody. He's he's oh, talking about know. more painting eras he's talked about you know the 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 the, the depth of the video game and he's spearheaded all the same chris what are you on spe- <laughs> <laughs> like what are you on <laughs> and he also spearheaded chris's work which is like all of her work is kind oh, of oh there's davin oh there's davin lost that one because you weren't here davin but that's okay yeah. you still you still get lost this program. So i had to wait for my freaking internet to reset oh, just give right. me one more second there right. fellas yep all, All right, right so boys. yeah, <laughs> Chris, you did you did an excellent uh, excellent presentation. I did enjoy your answers; they were hilarious. I always enjoy Chris's answers. You I thought that, I thought that his uh, like video game one was the most compelling for me because I was like, I, uh, I until was he like, until he honestly, tracked. Until, you know what? Uh, Drew, honestly, Drew, until he, if he picked a different studio, I might be okay with this. <laughs> I was a little the surprised fact that he by picked the a literally worse well. studio for that would be terrible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, EA I mean, it would was... never produce that in a million years. Okay, guys, that's part of the argument was when he when he gave his answer and then nobody responded, and I was like, I'm gonna have to give this to Chris because he's the only one arguing right now. But you know, you pull it out, Jody. So good for you. Thank you. All right, Chris, it was in your that pullout game is strong, Chris. The, the only thing <laughs> I gotta say is that every single game I play, I win music. That's it. That's true. <laughs> You're the reigning champion of the music. Category. And the worst thing is, he usually he usually picks something that none of us are going to bother to argue with him. <laughs> yeah, they're like, whatever, Chris, you can have it. We're like, whatever, Chris. <laughs> it's fine. It's just the music. We'll break guy. a leg. Um, yeah, there's your one point, Chris. <laughs> All right, so we got our final two for the competing. We've got Dad. Right, we've got on. Jody. It's I'm gonna watch the speed rounds. Let's let's see if Davin cannot bitch about me googling a statistic. <laughs> Are you gonna Google more statistics? No, you told me not to, so I'm not. Well, good. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So let's get into the bonus round, speed round. Starting it off for the movies category, best now. All right, uh, I guess I should clarify. First, first to answer, yeah. 
Yes, that's right. First and this, most of these are A or B questions. So yeah. Oh, yeah. are they? Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Best natural disaster for a movie: volcanoes or tornadoes? Volcanoes. Jody with volcanoes. Davin's gonna have tornadoes. Jody. Have you ever seen Twister? A yes, lot of great. people live in that movie. Volcano movies, not so much. People get burned to death. They die. They get encased in encased in molten lava. Well, what's left of them anyway. Uh, look at Pompeii. Look at what happened there. Wow. You don't want that. You don't want <laughs> nothing to do with volcanoes, my friend. At least with a at least with a hurricane and stuff. Yes, people can die, but they usually don't die from the actual thing. They usually die from something that happens, like they get hit by a car or something, uh, with with a hurricane. Volcanoes can kill you. They can kill you. You're a bottle. Pompeii. It's funny. The reason I didn't say anything at the start there is because I thought it said volcanoes or tomatoes, and I'm like, what? I didn't even spell tomatoes right. But anyway, attack of the killer, attack of the killer tomatoes. That's my, that's my tomatoes. That would be interesting. Here's why um, tornado movies are better than um, volcano movies. One, Twister is better than any volcano movie ever. Two, you'd have to be an idiot. You know, we see t- what makes tornadoes scary is they are unpredictable and can just drop down on you. Whereas don't you know be next to a volcano when it's erupting and you'll You're be fine. Right. <laughs> so, volcanoes few massive miles long uh stuff okay into they, the air so they, they also have the there. ability to kill you later as well after the initial impact so with that like for instance the qual- so cool how long is your movie it doesn't matter it does if it's going to kill you like years really. later. That's a long ass movie. You could you could easily put in a little cut that says two weeks later, and then all of a sudden people are choking on dust. It doesn't matter. It's a movie, my friend. That's, That's your rebuttal. Irrelevant. Uh, it, tornadoes are more exciting. Like you can do the running from them scenes. They like another one could drop right down in front of you. They can be different sizes, different speeds. That entire they movie was erratic about patterns. Tornadoes. Volcano. You know it's going to erupt days beforehand. Just walk away from the volcano. Volcanoes Do you want to die by up. wind or die by fire, my friend? That's I don't want to die by fire, so I'm not going to hang out by a volcano while it's erupting. Whereas there are whole parts of the world where you can't, like, predict All right. Volcanoes. All right. All right. Um... Oh, that's good arguments. I think I'm going to give this one to Jody for volcanoes. Uh, he was presenting more dangerous scenarios. Um... Yeah. Tornadoes just sort of like show up. And admittedly, I think out of all the natural disaster movies, I remember the ones with volcanoes more than I do the ones with tornadoes. So Jody gets How that point. That Twister premiere, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Counting to your so cows, Meg. <laughs> all right. Yep. <laughs> Moving on to TV. Who's the better team, Ninja Turtles or Power Rangers? Ninja Turtles. Turtles. 100%. Oh, Jody had it first. Oh, Jody got the Turtles. The Power Rangers <laughs> are so just, defeated. The Power Rangers are just a ju- just essentially a rebranding of something else. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are a comic book that got made into a TV show that got made into live action movies that are also awesome with the exception of the third one. And overall, it's great. You have different uh, different personalities for each one of them whereas you have different colors in the Power Rangers, whoop you do. Uh, and they all essentially just do the exact same thing just slightly different. Uh, whereas, and you don't get all that stupid teen drama crap that you get with Power Rangers. You're a puddle. You get it with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, there's no teen drama between like Raphael and April or, you know, Michelangelo and April or anyway. And we both went for Ninja Turtles because we like that franchise better, but they're not a better better team. Here's why the Power Rangers are a better team. And for one thing, they actually do have separate personalities and they're actually more realistic people than the caricatures that the Ninja Turtles are. Especially when they're hanging out. The the Power Rangers, their whole thing is coming together as a team and working together to create the Megazord. Their whole thing is working as a team where Turtles don't do that. They're just rat The the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles all complement each other. Not only that, but they're also related to each other, which they have that extra bond of being essentially family uh the power rangers aren't family they're just a bunch of random dudes that all got together and ended up doing this and with that yes it's great that it but it's still not really that great it's based on a different uh a different thing altogether it's just rebranded and dubbed uh and with the teenage Mutant ninja turtles original ip great uh great team overall because of the fact you're that a puddle they're brothers and they they care for each other we're not t- the question isn't who's the better family or who's a family it's the who's the team. better team and 
Power Rangers is literally an analogy of coming together as a team because at the end of every episode they do that. They come together and work together to make this mega yeah, which takes comes all of together them. To it takes the full the team. Star. It's literally okay. a teamwork analogy. So if the yep. question is who's the better team, it has to be the Power Rangers, whether we like the franchise. There's better no better team than family, my friend, because family understands the needs and the wants that are happened with the other people that are in the I team. I would say families are more likely to be dysfunctional than a team that works together. That's right. Look at our Davin family. The turtles the are. Yes, exactly. That, Davin gets the point. Davin gets the point for Power Rangers. He emphasized why they were a better team. To be quite honest, once I picked the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I'm like, shit, I should have picked the Power Rangers because I used the <laughs> analogy. Yeah, exactly. They are an analogy for teams. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, excellent answer, Devin. All right, we're moving on to the music section. Name a show. Where's Chris? Chris gets the point. Most... I... Oh. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> just give it to Chris. <laughs> All right. Uh, Much music. Oh, wait. Yeah, uh, Nate, which was the better music station? Much, Much. music or MTV? Much. So he basically Much. just read Much. the screen Much. and yelled out an answer Easy. before you even announced it. Is that allowed? I well, mean, yeah, it's up there. Uh, to be fair, I was tripping because I was reading a different question. I was like, wait, wait, that's not that. <laughs> but shit. that's not all my right, fault. Well, nope, that's anyway. not your fault. Uh, anyway, go ahead, Davin. All right. Joe, do you watch Much is better movies? because. I can't argue for you. Sorry. Yeah, well, feed me them in text. Anyway, um, much the reason it's better. Now, they both started off strong and ended poorly, I feel. But what much hung on to the idea of music longer than MTV. MTV started the whole, we're just a reality show station that eventually plagued much music. But much, MTV did it worse and did it more. Much music was, for when we were growing up, it was the source for music, man. Like, the, they had such great shows. Like the, Sorry, I was talking to my kid. Um, <laughs> she needs a resume printed out. Which is Sorry, I, I need to time. I need to clarify one thing here. There was a slight mix up. This is actually a history question. Uh, oh, this, this is the music so. question. Yeah, this well, one's a history. Based question. on history, MTV does a better job. Um, oh, okay. So, with uh sorry guys, I, I I do apologize, but I have to quickly print something up for my daughter. She's going on a job interview, uh, and oh, yeah, I didn't no get problem. it until just now, apparently. So here we go. We're printing it now. Okay, so just grab it out of there when you're done. Okay, cool. Anyway, sorry, sorry guys. Uh, so MTV, MTV has a vast, uh, a vast back background. On top of that, it is the original music television. Um, so with that, you know, you have the fact that they established this category. Um, not only did they establish that category, and abandoned, they abandoned it. it. Yeah, so did Much Music. Have you watched Later. Much Music recently? No, okay. they're both. The nice bad thing now. about MTV <laughs> is they branched out into other things, such as music-related movies, uh, music-related TV shows as well. Much music did do some TV shows that were music-related. I don't recall a You're single a time that they've produced anything that was uh, other than a TV show. I think Much Music supported music better. Now it supported Canadian music. It supported more underground bands. MTV was always a little more mainstream. So was it as helpful to musicians and music in its, you know, uh, within its reach, whether that be Canada or the US or whatever. Being the first to feel... produce a video out on on live television. Yes, I know. Video killed the radio. No, it was popcorn with hot butter, wasn't it? But anyway, um, they were the originator. Model. That doesn't make it the best. Much did what they did better. They, they clearly they've they've managed to take the idea and expand on it. They expanded on the fact that they did music related uh, movies, which is a big deal. Um, they also did a lot of TV shows, some of which are terrible, uh, just like much music. Uh, much music, I don't think, produces any good TV shows. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I can think of a couple MTV shows. Uh, on top of that, MTV also had some extra creative stuff, such as artist stuff like for instance animation they did their um, um their their different animation type stuff uh they also gave uh, way to a lot of different shows such as king of the hill stuff like that jody's points mm, none of it okay. had to do with music it was all about music, cartoons yes. and other things the better music much station music, doesn't say the better music supported music, music. And it video on trial music. was a show much music had um, yes yeah remember, there was also remember electric like, circus for my pop-up video haunts, electric circus uh yeah. mm. Yes, it is. Which is the better music station? Uh, shit. But if this yeah, is the history really question, it doesn't have anything to do with yeah, music. 
no, it doesn't have anything to do with music. It is definitely the history. And I think, uh, I think I I'm gave you this one, but no, but that's not what the question is, which was the better music station. Yeah. Just cause it's a music station doesn't mean it can't be better at something else. It's, it's true. Well, it's, I think that is what it's asking. It's, it's, <laughs> it's well, I guess the judge gets to decide that, not you. Well, they, yeah, they, okay, so they're both considered music stations, and when I say that, it doesn't specify music. It's about not anymore, which one was the better okay. of the channels, <laughs> right? right? Um, so I'm going to give this one to Jody. He pointed out more historical winnings with MTV. You did emphasize the music, and I wanted to give it to you at that point, but the argument was what was the better station, really. Um, no, so... Yeah. That was the history question. We're going to reverse it a little. Go back to the music question. And this is the music question. It's not A or B. So you guys are going to, I'm going to give you guys a second to think about this one. The question okay. is, name a show with the most iconic theme music. What? Hmm. Come on, guys. If I was in this, it would be over already. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, gonna say. I'll. I'll say Star Trek Deep Space Nine. I just guys, I love it. Um, <laughs> so, All right, I mean, <laughs> Star Trek Deep Space Nine from Davin Jody. Well, he can start arguing. I don't have. Yeah, any. we have I to mean, get yours. Yeah. We? Well, oh, do you? I mean, oh, okay. Uh, I uh, usually do. Okay. Definitely. I'll. I'll let uh, Dave producer. What do you say? Usually, we uh, if uh, somebody is chomping at the bit, we, we let the other person think about it for the 30 seconds. Uh, so uh, if they don't have an immediate answer, so he's okay. All right. I'm then, a veteran, my then, friend. All right. So, Davin, you can begin your, your delegation, and then Jody will have to come to it with the answer. Well, I admit that this one does come down a bit to personal preference, but I would, like, I would uh, debate this in terms of star trek themes in itself and it being my favorite i don't think there's many more themes as instantly recognizable as one of those uh, original five show star trek themes until they were called faith of the heart um did you just give away with it anyway um so and it's it's a beautiful orchestral work it 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 doesn't get old like what was just played which once you hear that three times you just want to like i don't know, jump off a building or something it, you're a bottle it's, it's, it's just beautiful all right, I'm gonna pick and Nash. iconic because every time. What, I what even it, was it, Steve? Do, 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 do. You don't know Mash? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So whenever I hear that, even the first couple bars of that, uh, I instantly know it's Mash that's coming on. Uh, and Mash to me, the the thing that I think that is important about a TV theme song is it brings the the ambience of the actual show to it. Uh, now, Davin, you have a great example of that. Uh, DS Nine's DS Nine's music is pretty impressive, except everybody skips it now because it's so fucking boring. Oh, I uh, <laughs> but anyway, Mash is interesting because at least something's happening uh, on screen when they play the music. Uh, but it also brings me back to that time when I'm watching it, and it's also giving me those feels. Uh, Your rebuttal, something I don't get from DS9. being someone who does follow closely chatter around Star Trek, I can tell you that the most common sentiment around the DS9 theme is that it isn't skippable, and you don't Are you skip getting it that because from one, it board? sets the stage, it sets the stage for the show, and it, it's it's that orchestral that upwelling. That it friggin' brings you to tears every time. It's not one you skip. It like, brings you to like tears. You, you every do time. an innocuous. You might want to see a doctor, my friend. Like, yeah, no, Mash, it, Mash brings back so many it's, memories. It's, it's a little riff episode. that can get caught in your head, but it's like it's it iconic doesn't have the episodes. Gravity and that that's something DS9 that does. Mash will never be able to be. Uh, Mash beats that hands down every time. <laughs> it, 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 that, that I'm not emotionally attached to the theme music of DS9, uh, but I am producer Dave, producer Mash. Dave. Yes. <laughs> Are you emotionally attached to DS9? I like the song, but it's it I agree it's long. Um so oh. I, you can, you can. Well, I think it's iconic. And it, the the the, oh, the visuals that go along that. with it are, are, are gorgeous as well. I wouldn't disagree that it's iconic. Uh, in the but I think wormhole, mine, which has a much higher viewing rate and also ran for a lot longer, is definitely more iconic. If you're going to, it's go definitely by. better than. Well, like, look, that's a different era. Everything got twenty seasons in those days. That's not really fair. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it on the table straight up. Jody gets the point for Mash for most iconic. Uh, Davin, you gave a lot of points. Mm. But they seemed like personal biases. You really didn't emphasize what made it super iconic. 
Uh, Just wondering if you guys would have killed the, you both in the music category again. What was that? I would have killed you guys both in the music category again. What would you have picked? would have been Cheers. Yeah. That's I was going to pick Seinfeld. Oh. Seinfeld. Oh, see? That would have been a great really answer, too. But I These went are with good answers. These are really good answers. No, true. Yeah, no. You you nailed it on the head with that mash description and how it makes you feel when you listen to it. And yep, perfect, perfect answer, Jody. Gotta give you that point without a doubt. All right, <laughs> we're getting to the final two. It's getting heated. Jody's in the lead with a single point. If he uh, if he holds it tight, he might just win it here. We got the sports question: Which was the biggest win for Canada? The World Series Baseball Blue Jays '92 or NBA Championship Toronto Raptors '2019? I would say the Blue Jays. Dabbing for the right. Blue Jays, so Jody's already. I know the other Raptors. one's more recent. Oh, Jody loves baseball. Here we go. The other one's more recent, but the thing is, um, why the Blue Jays one was so significant is, unlike basketball that was actually invented in Canada, um, baseball was really America's game. It's America's pastime, as they call it, and having a Canadian team win America's pastime, I think. Um, had more significant impact, and um, you would be ball. like baseball. Just you're just folding. You're just folding. Uh, you're just like no, baseball? no, no, not at all. I I just wanted to emphasize that baseball is terrible. Uh, and yeah, it's terrible. Wait, which um, one's Jody arguing? The basketball or the baseball? I'm by <laughs> He's the basketball. Uh, now, yeah. the thing that made the NBA championship uh, for the Toronto Raptors in 2019 very interesting is the fact that this is a Canadian team in a very American-dominated sport. Now, yes, I will agree with you. Baseball is very American as well. Uh, but it's assumed that America or Canada could win it, uh, where it's always assumed in the NBA that Toronto had no chance. They're never going to win this. They're never going to win. Uh, so it's a better kind of comeback story, I guess, is a good way to look at it. Um, the uh, the thing that's about the NBA. Oh, I disagree, actually. The other one was more of a comeback story because the Blue Jays were way worse than the Raptors. The Blue Jays were god awful until they finally won it. It didn't like I meant it, as they, a almost did, they almost did a right money here. ball situation. But again, it's America's but pastime. The Blue, like, the Blue Jays winning the World Series was like a Canadian team winning the friggin Super Bowl. Like it, that was, yeah. And it was so important that they did like, it again it, a year it, later because the, that's how hard it was for them. Well, that's it. That's another reason that made it significant. Yeah. That same the Raptors team probably won't went win another on to for another 20 keep years. It, it's going to be a really the Raptors. The Raptors, it, it, it's, it's a more unexpected year. thing to happen. The, it the, wasn't. the 92 Jays were a good team. Uh, the uh, Raptors were a good team in 2019 as well, but, if it if if the World Series baseball was so exciting in 1992, how could they do it again in 1993? All of a sudden, why is it that it, it, it's so important that it happens again a year later? Uh, but we're talking about what was the biggest wins? Like what was biggest in the moment that it happened? Yeah, which was absolutely. The World and Series the, viewers, of the, the viewership games. on the NBA championship was much higher, I'm sure, uh, because no, no, it was more accessible. Uh, no, no, because no. in '92 we couldn't we couldn't stream it online. Uh, you know, we didn't the have Blue all Jays these different in devices 90... available. So if you go for the biggest win for Canada, if you're talking about Canada as a whole, you're reaching more people with the NBA championship as well. So you're also dealing with that. No, the, I remember what it was like in the Blue Jays teams. There were songs, there were albums. I had the Blue Jays cassette tape where it was yep, just like them was very talking about, they that. made like Rock and Robin about Robbie Allen. Yeah, and I can't go anywhere in Mississauga without and They a sold out the shirt. Sky Dome. They sold out yeah. the Sky Dome. That's like yeah. friggin' we 60 the, or 80,000 people compared to 14,000. Yeah, I can't go anywhere without saying a We the North shirt. So you know. oh, oh, oh. Which was like, I had Blue right. Jay shirts. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> Everyone whoa, did. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, gentlemen. All right. This is very deep. This, this is, this is, this is going to be a hard one for me to, to honestly decide. I was kind of, I went in, I was thinking 92 Blue Jays because of it was 92 and it was sort of a global, like everybody heard about it. 2019 is more internet, but Jody did make a good point in the fact that, uh, you know, there's probably way more people watching the NBA championship game at the time. Than I don't that. have that the numbers. Conjecture. Yeah, that was just conjecture and I disagree. <laughs> All right. That's fair. Uh, that's fine. There's, he also mentioned that there, you can't go far without seeing a, we, the North shirt. Oh, um, see, I'm recency bias. This is recency bias. 
You, you don't remember Blue Jay bias? shirts everywhere? No, I, yeah, I do. I remember mine too. Were I remember watching albums. that on TV. There but... were music albums. <laughs> it was insane. All right, comic books. Spider-Man I'm, I'm gonna... showed up in I'm, a Blue Jays I... comic. <laughs> I'm going to reach out to the panel here. Uh, Chris, uh, who would you give this okay, one Okay, so the problem with the panel I... is the panel likes baseball. Yeah. So this is totally <laughs> biased. <I> don't... <laughs> Absolutely they do. I, um, well, I like it's, basketball, it's, it's too. It's not biased. Um, I, I would personally... They both have good arguments. But because I also had the Blue Jays CD, I had the CD. I would go with that. Yeah. I had the CD. Like, uh, Rock and Robbie. I, tweet. Tweet yeah, do you buy Robbie, CDs man. in 2019, Chris? What? Do you no, buy CDs the in 2019? Album. I didn't buy a Toronto Raptors album. I don't no, even you know. Probably wouldn't. Do you know why? I, I do. Because it's 2019. <laughs> I do not. Dave. I do not own a Raptors hat. Or uh, a yeah, sure. Um, I, I would just say. I would say like it's hard to compare because um, it's two different eras, and um, I'd say that because the Blue Jays came first, that might have more of, of an argument. Because, no, uh, but Jays. it was huge when the Blue Jays won, um, yeah, and uh, and the Raptors. I remember both. But when I was when the when the Blue Jays won, I was living in Montreal, which is was at the time which Expos territory. Uh, and we were just as happy about that a win. Canadian team that also could have easily won. Uh, but you yeah. remember the Expos? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Expos were my first team. Like uh, I grew up in Montreal, so like uh, it was definitely a bit. We were we were equally supportive of the Jays, and so uh, I don't know. So I'd like to All say right, one you know thing what? before you judge. Okay, if you okay. don't mind. Okay, the question says, which is the biggest win for Canada? The biggest win for Canada is, how did it touch that many people? I've already given you the fact that it's touched way more people uh, with mine than it would be with that one. It, no. You're talking a much different market. And with that, it, it, I, I don't see how you can... Number one, you have two biases for baseball. The, the <laughs> Blue Jays appealed to children as well. Like I said, they were in Spider-Man comics. You don't think they, basketball they appealed to, to children? One of the Not largest the the Blue Jays were. organizations the Blue Jays were is run by the NBA. There were this, this, is really one. this is a tough one. This is a tough one. It's a good you, question. This is, tough. But this is it's so hard fucking question. tough. It was um, the first time in a Canadian team won an American sports championship. That's it. That's that's what I was looking for. That exact argument. That isn't fair. They were the first... Okay, but like okay, they were the first. Great, got this. Not that's different. how you won the MTV argument. <laughs> yeah, that it, was a it, history. It, it would be arguably, it would be arguably the bigger win because here's how I look at it: the '92 seems like the bigger win because there was it was before really the age of the internet, and that shit was all over the place. And like I lived in small town Sackville, and I didn't watch baseball, but I sure shit knew about the Blue Jays win in '92. Yeah, because everybody really watched watch the NBA. News, sure, but I don't know that much about NBA. But the hype of the Toronto Raptors winning the basketball game was going on for weeks. The Jays almost seemingly came out yeah. of nowhere. Were you in? Were you in the so, city uh, back then? Uh, I was. Murphy? Yeah, I was. Was, it was, I was. I was actually. Rick showing the streets during that win, and it was madness and chaos. And I sure. would have probably given it to that based off of my personal experience. But I feel like the bigger win for Canada was the 92 Jays game because of the impact of the American sport and all that stuff. So, yeah. All right. Well, we got the wild card because we got a tie, oh, I tie game. Decide it. Tie Fuck, game. This uh, always happens when I judge. Jesus. It happens to a lot of judges. Don't worry. All right. Final sure. question, guys. That's an A or B. So final here we question. Go. Oh, Random. Who had a bigger impact on film? Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. Ooh, Jody got it in just before. I think Jody what? got it first. It might be. It might be internet latency. Who does to say, Davin? Yeah, I'm pretty, uh, I heard myself before I heard Jody. The judge, the judge <laughs> has to go with what he heard first. Wow. Uh, yeah. Charlie Chaplin has a much bigger influence on film uh name five buster keaton movies i don't think anybody can okay charlie chaplin is an icon an icon uh buster keaton obviously does have his own uh accolades but nothing like charlie chaplin charlie chaplin is the guy that everybody knows as as the guy in black and white silent film uh, he's that guy. He's the guy that played Hitler. He's the guy that <laughs> did all these things. Like it, it's your rebuttal. It, it, it's 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 just an icon. Well, the thing about Buster Keaton is, look, he's he's not as well known because he doesn't have a Hitler mustache. But 
but <laughs> not to mention Charlie, Ch- Charlie Chapman was a pedophile too. But anyway, um, Buster Keaton is the person <laughs> other um, physical actors, even to this day, point to as the person they look to for inspiration. Oh, yeah, it's not Charlie Chaplin. Got that no, I didn't actually. No, it's things I've heard, like people like uh, like exactly. actors like Jim Carrey for your rebuttal. Charlie Chaplin is an icon. Uh, I don't. I. I don't know right. how it, you can make this any worse. Like it, it, it's. It, it's an. He's an icon. You. You tried to pick him too, and the reason why you did that is because that's the name he's, that hit you first. And if that's that the is name the that name that hit, that hit me first, first. he Just had like the bigger Turtles impact. Did. That was the one that you picked, man. And yeah, you just like Ninja Turtles because you didn't get it first. So just like Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh, absolutely! But that doesn't make the that doesn't make your argument. And it the argument is just simple. It, it's simple. He's more iconic, which it's has a bigger it. impact on film. Plain and to simple. Us. I can't even name no. one. No, 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 no. Let me answer. rebuttal. Here's not why one. Jody's not answering the question, and I am. It's not who we the layman's easily most recognized because he has a Hitler mustache and he's more cartoonish looking. So people drew little doodles of him. It's who has a bigger impact on film. And that is the person that people in films look to for inspiration, which is Name Buster one movie. Inclu- the, the general. Okay. There you go. That's one. The navigator. Oh, the great dictator. Okay. Iconic there. movie. Okay. Iconic. I named two. You named one. Mm-hmm. So, but again, and we do also the contributions he made by giving having his wife give birth to Michael Keaton, another great again. Michael Keaton that. is not related to Buster Keaton. I'm, I'm quite certain he is. Ooh. Michael Keaton's really uh, Michael Douglas. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Tom okay, I thought I heard that somewhere. <laughs> well, then give it to that. Anyway. But he is the person that can we'll just look pick up to facts now. for inspiration. I think he's even I related remember, to Keaton. I don't he's remember the Keaton. name of the scene, but I've heard people, actors and performers say that there's this one scene by Buster Keaton. Modern that times, the, most, the kid. That is the most the, um, the great dictator. impressive These physical are all comedic iconic all movies. Buster Keaton, you don't even know who the hell he is. Well, I've got his he, lineage. He died well, in 1966. About, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, died here, here's he died the same year I was born. <sighs> okay. Chaps, so yeah. these are good numbers. argument points. Uh, Jody, I feel like you're trying to argue more for the iconicism of Charlie Chaplin. Davin argued for the bigger impact because he said a lot of filmmakers look towards Buster Keaton, especially those that With are in the stuff. Absolutely no proof. I can say the same thing. No, that's okay. I've heard. I've now I can look that up and I'll Google it if you like. I've heard that from several different actors. Like who? Like Jim Carrey, for example. Okay, other let's find actors. a reference to that because you're full of shit. I'm okay. not going to I hear that all right. 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 Like, he's he's already, the best. Oh, he's also the father of Michael, actor of all time. Michael Keaton. Okay, I had okay. that part wrong. Yeah, you've heard a lot, have you? Okay. But, yeah, well. Okay. Well, I'm uh, giving you examples of this one, of what Murphy. Is a fantastic. <laughs> A fantastic iconic it's not about who we recognize the picture of because there's a Hitler mustache but again because yes yeah, a lot of people don't, don't know who Buster, Buster Keaton, Keaton is, is so... but the people who make and act in movies do 20th and century, and play 20th century guys but, like, but Davin yeah, has heard stuff. that that is an influence for everybody not everybody but I've that. heard so many physical comedians say it in interviews it's including again, Jim Carrey including the bigger, like, impact, uh, on bigger film. impact on film Films. Yes, on like the he, film he, industry. Yeah, Charlie Buster Chaplin Keaton is studied in film basically school. invented his, his, physical acting. Movies are considered like the masterpieces, most... and they're comedy. So are so are Buster Keaton's. Okay, well, you're on the here. Uh, that is. <sighs> It's, it's, the he's one, the one that influenced the people making movies. I've never heard a single right. actor or anyone say that. Was the, if he was the dad of Batman, Batman, okay, but he's uh, not he's, the dad. He's, of he is not. He is definitely not. So Michael okay, Keaton yeah, I messed Douglas. that up. And he's not related he's to Diane Keaton either. Is he related to Michael Douglas? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Which Michael Douglas? All right. Um, he's fucking Batman. Give me a <sighs> it's it's what I'm legitimately movies, not. Batman is an movie. image. Yeah, yeah I, I'm. Like, I think oh, I'm gonna have to give this one to Davin for the the bus. He he made the points about how he he's more of an impact on film. Charlie Chaplin. I I just heard he's iconic. He everyone knows Charlie Chaplin, sure, but I don't know. How long have you known really Davin? If, how long? I don't if know. The, like literally, you know everyone that go and play him. in these debates longer than me. Every single one yeah. of them. So don't go there, yeah. man. <laughs> well, here's, like, here's the thing, longer. right? <laughs> uh, 
when I think of films, I know both of these gentlemen's work. Um, I I think of the techniques that Buster Keaton introduced into film. Charlie Chaplin did that a lot of character knows. work. Mm-hmm. Character. I mean, okay, did you ever see He's the a modern scene study, where somebody, but that's fine. You ever you ever see that classic scene where a, a house falls and somebody's standing and they go right through a window? Buster Keaton was the first one to do that. Um, Buster Keaton, Man. everything he did was a stunt. So I'm giving this point to Davin. Um, and purely not beyond bias because I am a big Buster Keaton fan. <laughs> and that means, um, oh, that kind of seals the deal. But anyway, uh, uh, that's, well, that's, it, that's it, all she wrote then. That's all she wrote. Devin is our winner. Well, at least he can get a win <laughs> once in a while. Remember, he's going to kill galaxies. He can't. he can't even keep his fucking head on his body. Davin, can... Davin was so thrilled about this win that he lost his head. Um, exactly. I got great debates. Excellent, excellent all around. Um, yeah, yeah, guys. I, Chris, what do you I, think? I, I wanted. I. Ah, geez. I think I should have won. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> we all. Think we'll that. do an all music debate and all I, judging. I, your you predator uh, was one of the funniest ever. I gotta tell you, dude. Uh, uh, I was he slaughters. I was really I hoping for more examples. Go on. I don't know how. Chris, I, mean, I just need to know who exactly is the predator fighting in your movie. Is it the hippies? Well, no, he's gonna eat them. Yeah, but does he? Where does he, he, does he eventually fight, encounter a fight? What? Or is it just a slaughter fight? Fest? I don't know what he does. Yeah, he's the yeah, predator. You don't want to just slaughter people. <laughs> you think you would at least to represent like, like came up with an answer. Yeah, what what is this predator franchise? Let me do a quick search and then I'll yeah. have the the idea. No, it's only been around since the eighties, but yeah. I didn't even do a search. Praise no, me, no, we, it's we know. You didn't. Yeah, we. It's. <laughs> I just like I'm just like I don't know. Like fuck, the predator should be around in the nineteen sixties. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, it was an excellent show, gentlemen. I think we put on a great show. I yeah, know. Yeah, thank got you. Some things coming down the pipeline. Big Dave, what do you got for us? Uh, yeah, like we got lots of different things coming up here on our channel. Uh, in, well, trivial debates the once a month. Uh, we're doing a bit earlier this month, of course, because uh, we got my brother's wedding next Saturday. So we'll be back probably for the end of September, probably around September 25th or so uh, for the next edition. We'll kind of figure out who's involved with that. Also, you should check out our um, Star Trek themed channel called Live Long and Podcast, where Monday night's Star Trek Enterprise rewatch series. Uh, Jody, we're covering uh, along with Adam Woodward and Kevin Millard tomorrow the episode Dawn. Yes. Uh, that's tomorrow night. That's from season two. And then uh, this uh, Tuesday on Star Trek D Space Nine at nine ish, uh, going through every episode and reviewing and watching that one. We're doing uh, the episode from uh, the fifth season. It's called Impact Nor. Uh, we'll be on with Good Jeff Meter. T- you can definitely skip the intro. Tuesday night, uh, <laughs> and then on and then on Thursday, uh, we got Star Trek Lower Decks coming back for season three. Uh, I gotta still figure out the time and the panel for that one, uh, but Davin's gonna be in town, so I'm hoping we're gonna find a way to uh, get that I'll, done. I'll I'll be See on what we can do. Lower Decks panel. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, earlier in the day, the better, because um, my anniversary is that day as well. So I got to try to uh, happy get that anniversary, Happy anniversary. Happy thank anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Happy anniversary. And then uh, what else, guys? Uh, we have um, on Super Mater Brothers podcasting, uh, we're cu- currently covering Big Brother Season 24, USA version, with Jeff Mater and Jameel Robinson over on Super Mater Brothers podcasting, our other channel. We've also covered Survivor this year and uh, Big Brother Canada. So check that out over on that channel as well. And um, uh, we got, uh, what else? What am I forgetting? Davin, your podcast, Locuters of Trek. Oh, yeah, I have podcast, Locuters of Trek. We just did a, a Class L probe with Adam Woodward. And myself oh, and Dave, L. yeah, class L probe there. We deep dive into the debate nine topics. What did we do? We we deep dived into uh, does Admiral Power corrupt? Abso- absolutely, always. Does uh, does Deanna Troy nailed. commit professional malpractice by reading the emotions of the crew? Yes, mm-hmm. and I agree with that. It, was, it was an interesting discussion on that one. And uh, and then the L, what about uh, oh, X rated? Yeah, X rated. Yeah, yeah, we're doing. Uh, we're going to be doing it Monday instead of Tuesday this week, and it'll be late, late, so we're calling this one X-Rated After Dark. Oh, cool. After Dark. But aren't they all after, finishing off after the Dark yeah, Phoenix? Well, no, because we 8 o'clock here, and it's summertime, so there's a little daylight when we start to normally. Um, wow. um, 
uh, yeah, and uh, that'll be the end of the Phoenix Saga. All right. Well, check that over. X-Rated and Locutor's a track as well. Uh, check out the Hellbound podcast every Wednesday with Alex Blackburn and Michael Chan. Uh, it's a horror theme podcast. As well as my son, Eamon Mater, also known as Sam Jerka, is doing Let's Talk About Fighting Games with his brother, buddies, Super Smash Bros. Seth and Paranoia over on Spotify or wherever you get your audio podcasts. Check that out. And that's it, guys. I think we can wrap up on this edition of Trivial Debates. Uh, it's been uh, episode. This was our 66th episode, not episode six. Can you can you put the titles back on for everybody? Oh, look, Jody, most wins ever. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I'm recognized. Still, still, the, still the the, the all time champion there, Jody. I am. All right, and uh, thanks for being with us. Great job, Murphy, on your hosting, and uh, we will see you on the next good time. Questions. All right. And this is the most iconic theme music Very ever. Good questions, by the way. That's true. Deep oh, wait, this one's good. Yeah, this has... nah. Where's the skip button?